Okay, we are back again, HJ Platinum Realty, with another interview with a, a, a actually a really good friend of mine, uh, a phenomenal guest. Uh, this man, uh, James Marshall, he's been in the real estate business for 20 years. He's from the Bay Area. He's the father of one, and he's currently a real estate broker right now. Uh, Mr. James Marshall, man, how's it going? Happy New Year, brother. How you doing? Man, happy new year, man. I'm excited to be here, excited to start the year off. HJ Platinum Realty in the building, man. I am fired up. Let's go. Have we said 2024 yet? It's, it's 2024. 2024. We're here. We made it. <laughs> so, so, so James and I have been knowing each other for years. A lot of my contacts, as you can tell, uh, we kind of met, played basketball together a lot. And me and James have had a lot of battles on the basketball court, both together and against one another. We played a lot of basketball. Ain't that right, James? Oh, we played a ton of basketball, man. Uh, you still, you still playing, man. You know, being being as tall as I am and as earth shaking as I was, man. You know, the knees, uh, uh, they they haven't fared as as well. But uh, you know, you, we we moved on. You know, we on the golf course now. We're taking a little bit easier. We are moving the stress up to the hips. Okay, okay. I've been I've been contemplating getting on the links, man, and getting out to the sh the driving range, but. I haven't made that that move just yet, uh, but I do. I do have. I have considered it. Uh, it is on my bucket list. I want to get out there and, and do like a whole uh, eighteen holes or something at some point in my life. But uh, oh, it's beautiful, man! You get out there. You gotta, you know, you, you find you gotta find a good golf course, man. It's about the scenery. It's about getting up. You know, the crack of dawn, watching the sunrise. You know, walking on that beautiful grass, man. Driving the golf court and just. The camaraderie of the people that you with, if you choose to be with somebody, man, it's it's a beautiful thing. I recommend it for everybody. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I gotta get out there and check it out, man. That's, that's kind of been the bane of it. I I uh I want to I want to get out there, but I've been boxing. So James, also you have you, done some you spent some time doing MMA. You've actually trained a little bit in MMA as well, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, some might consider me a lethal weapon. You know, uh, you know, no, 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 uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. You've, you had, know. Some fight, you've had some some amateur fights before. You fought in a couple of couple of different fights. Yeah, I got to, I got a fight under my belt, and uh, you know, just great experience, man. I'm a daredevil, you know. You know, it's just like I can't see it. I got to live it. You know, I, I got I got to, I got to be the centerpiece of my own movie, man. I love it. I love it. And, and and now, James, you've traveled a lot as well. You've traveled to Spain, and like, what is your what is your favorite destination? Where have you where have you traveled to? Where you say you got to go visit? Oh man, uh, spent a lot of time in in Spain, um, France, Greece. Um, I, I love Europe, man. I, I I love drinking wine, and um, you know I love I love art. So you know those those places just just really just you know get it for me. Out of the three, it, it's kind of hard because they they offer something a little bit different. I I, I probably have to say, you know, if you if you just want somewhere where you can just relax and you know maybe you retired or something uh greece greece is where it's at i mean it, the, the water just the bluest cleanest water you didn't seen uh smart educated you know upbeat people the food is out of this world man if you like seafood and cheese and wine and all of that kind of thing uh, i mean it's definitely got to be in your top five of travel destinations Okay. Uh, if you if you going out towards Europe, man, it, 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 we had a blast out there. Okay, okay. I've been I've been considering we, we, we did uh, didn't go there. I want to get there as well. You got a lot of stuff I want to do, James. I'm glad you uh, I can live vicariously through James Marshall on some of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so now let's kind of get into it, man. I, I, I do want to know. So you have been in real estate for 20, 20, 20 years. I'm in May. It'll be twenty years exactly. So. Uh, You've, you've got a lot of experience. You've seen the ups and downs in the market, uh, and you kind of know. And so uh, what 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 got you into real estate? An accident. That's, that's, that's just the truth. <laughs> Man, I, you know, I got into um, – so everybody has a 9-11 story. Okay. My 9-11 story was I was on a car sales lot. Um, and, uh, well, actually let me back up. I got, I got fired from selling cell phones. Uh, 
uh, you know, and I won't go into the details of that, but I, I ended up getting fired on 9-11, ended up going to a car dealership um, and and quickly rose to being one of the best car salesmen there. Um, and I happened to uh, try to sell a guy a car who was in the mortgage business. And he said, man, I, I ain't never seen anybody try to sell like this. Let me show you how to really, you know, change your life around and, and make some serious money. And so I went, um, I went up to Walnut Creek where their offices was. The company at the time was called United Mortgage Group. So they were a big, you know, mortgage broker. Um, they ran a presentation, you know, uh, paved the way to uh, pay for me to get my license and all the school that I needed and, and kind of put me on the path. And, you know, uh, once I was licensed, it was like, okay, well, what's, what's next? What else can I do with this thing? And that that's what eventually led me into the the path of being a, a real estate agent and eventually a broker. Nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I, with the market being kind of where it's at today, um, you were doing real estate in 2008, 2007. What did you think is similar or and in, in different about the market, the state of the market back then and kind of where we're at now? Do you, do you foresee things that are, you know, hey, this, this reminds me of this market back then or, or what, what's your thoughts about the difference between the two markets? Uh, this market is completely different. Um, it is completely different because um, technology plays a role in this market to the tune that we've never seen Um in the history of, of the real estate market. I mean, um, right now we're in a climate where uh, sellers and buyers question the value of, of agents and brokers, you know, whether they need them or not. Um, you know, politics, you know, has always had um, an effect on, on real estate markets, but now it's, it's like supercharged um in, in terms of of how how it's uh, able to affect the market and we didn't really have all of these all of these things you know in the in the last crash you know it was kind of like uh corruption as usual you know all the banks were trying to sweep the bad stuff under the rugs and you know get them stock investors to keep you know keep keep buying them stocks up until the last minute they're like oh we can't we can't do anything man <laughs> The gig, the gig is up, <laughs> you know, and, and now, um, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, from from my view, if there was one similarity, that is that is the similarity. Um, I, I really believe right now that, um, you know, and, and there's several experts out there that 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 feel exactly the same way that I do that, you know, the market is teetering and everybody's sitting, you know, waiting for it to kind of fall off the cliff. Um, but it hasn't yet. And I feel like it hasn't because there's this kind of thing where nobody wants to, you know, drop the ball on their watch. Mm -hmm. And so there, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, false, you know, false value, false inflation, um, that kind of thing going on that's just propping it up. And, uh, you know, you know, we'll we'll see what we we'll see what's happening, but th th that would be the one one clear um, thing that I see that that's similar to where it was last time. Just the sweeping of the, the sweeping everything under the rug to keep it quiet. Now, now back then, I remember seeing a lot of foreclosures, short sales, the REOs. Um, back in the market, where it was like it was going crazy. Everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, it's, it's you know, cash or keys was, was was a thing back then. Everyone's losing their houses." Um, and so back then you say there wasn't there was never this thing where they didn't they didn't value agents and brokers they actually had a value for those guys because they could help them in those situations how are how are agents and, and brokers now able to help homeowners would you say in this market or in this climate in those similar situations so i think I, I I think that you know having having local agents that are familiar with the the local ordinances um, that have an idea of the communities that they work in, and this is this is specifically talking you know that there are agents that bounce from community to community, and you know they don't have any skin in the game. But having an agent that that is from that community that works a specific area that understands the inventory in the area that understands the, the different economic 
uh, influences in the area, that's where you're going to get your true value. That's that's what the the Zillows and the Redfins and the the Realtors dot Realtor dot coms uh, they they can't offer you uh, those things, you know. And that all that only really comes from having someone that's there, that's that's seasoned in the market, and that's been there, you know, long enough to get that kind of knowledge. Okay. Yeah, that's that's smart. Uh, so so, do you feel that this market is going to crash or you feel like we're kind of i mean what's your thought i mean obviously we can't no one has a crystal ball but what is your your thought about the state of this market are we looking at same same outcome i i i think that the market is um and 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 my reasoning for that is is what i believe to be common sense you know i i look at incomes across the board they haven't gone up um i'm looking at interest rates they have gone up I'm looking at pricing that has gone up. Right. And so if pricing has gone up and interest rates have gone up, which means the mortgage payments have gone up. But my you know, the the income of the people that would pay for those mortgages and pay for those houses has not gone up. Well, then that tells me we have a little bit of an affordability issue. Um, and, you know, economically, we, we've seen uh, companies begin to uh, lay people off, albeit quietly. Um, we know that there was a big, uh, you know, there was a big automotive strike uh, with the automotive union, you know, and they, they've struck a deal. But, you know, we'll see how that all plays out. You know, that that's, you know, the ink is still wet on that thing. Um, and so when you look at all of these factors, you know, I don't want to be the poo-poo guy, but it looks poo poo. And, <laughs> and, and, and contrary to everything that I said just right now, you know, the, the market is showing resilience right now, you know, and, and, it, and it's very baffling. Um, but from my standpoint, it, it can't last for long unless all of a sudden everybody got raises, which, you know, <laughs> unless unless you work in the fast food industry, I don't I don't think that's possible. <laughs> OK, oh, well, so that is a. Uh, Interesting, interesting. I actually like that. So, so with that being said, like, what kind of advice? What kind of advice? If you're advising a potential buyer in this market, what kind of? James, I got a little feedback. Is it something in the background? That's, I'm not sure if I hear it. A feedback no, I don't have any sound going. Maybe it's just on my end. feedback um i don't know but i think it's okay um all right anyway so no so uh so what kind of advice would you give a potential homeowner right now or a buyer not a homeowner a buyer what would you give a buyer to say hey james i want to buy a house today what what is your advice to that home buyer in this market i i think that the um I think for for buyers coming into the market right now, um, particularly first time home buyers, stop trying to swing for the fences. Our our first house does not need to be the shiny new house and the absolute best neighborhood that stretches our pocketbook all the way and all the family members come and go, oh my God, my baby got the most beautiful house. You know, we, we, we don't we don't need to do that. You know, like we need to we need to really draw inspiration from our parents and our grandparents, you know, that, that can do spirit that, you know, let me get something. Let me just, let me just get my foot in the door and, you know, I'll put a little bit of that sweat equity in there. I'll pull out the hammers. It don't have to be perfect. I'll make it as perfect as I can, because what happens is if you, if you follow that strategy as a buyer, number one, you're going to be dealing with deals that I believe you'll have a lot less competition with because, well, most most people don't have a lot of imagination. They need to walk into a turnkey house if, if it starts looking like, oh, I got to paint or, oh, I got to do carpet or, oh, I got to do this. It's like, oh, I, you know, I can't do it. That stuff costs, you know, money. Whereas mm -hmm. if you get into it um, and, you know, you accept that it's not perfect and you accept that you're not going to be there forever. Remember, most people move every five to seven years. Mm -hmm. So. You know, you get into that thing, then you sell it, and now maybe you've got some equity. And when you've got equity, now you're cooking with grease, as my grandma used to say. Oh, you yeah. know, 
you know, I got a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. Now I want to go buy. Now I can get the nice shiny house that everybody's, you know, looking at. And I can go and put a hundred thousand dollars down or two hundred thousand dollars down, whatever you've got. But a lot of times, you know, I've got clients right now, you know, that purchased in 2019 and, you know, their, you know, life situation has changed and they're wanting to do some things and, and they just, they just don't have it, you know, because they bought higher than, than they needed to. Oh, hang on one second, Mr. Marshall. Hang on one second. All right, sorry about that, James. That, my, that was my, uh, my, 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 uh, my wife, AKA, you know, she kind of runs the show behind the scenes. So that's kind of, you know, what you were seeing there. I had to address that real quick, but she says hi. <laughs> Mrs. Platinum Realty. I love it, baby. So. Um, but, but, but no, so, so that's great advice. So you, you're thinking that if you're a buyer right now, it's not a big, you know, so, so it's not a bad time, not necessarily a bad time to buy something. It's just, make sure it's the right situation is that kind of what your your advice you know, I, you know, at the end of the day you know doesn't matter if you're buying a home to live in it or as an investment vehicle real estate is an investment and and anytime you're doing any kind of investment for whatever reason the deal needs to be structured properly um and so you know finding fixer uppers and things like that you know they they need to go into it and they need to make sure that they have deals that are structured properly in terms that that favor them in their future okay I, okay i like that so it, it so it doesn't it, it, based on the situation um it, it may not be a bad time to purchase a property uh now now on the flip side of that what advice do you tell the seller who's in this market right now who's looking to sell <laughs> Man, sellers got it tough, brother. <laughs> sellers got how how do you sell when you sit in the two and three percent interest? Yeah. How, yeah. How, yeah. How do you do it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it, it it it's hard being in this industry to even like let these words ooze out of my mouth, but man, if you're a seller, hold on for dear life. Um, it, it's gotta be something very very tempting um you know in order to in order to make that swing you know you, you've really got to be able to crunch the numbers to to justify going from two or three percent you know up to six or seven percent um it you really got to do some soul searching and figure out you know why it's necessary for you to do that uh, yeah that's tough man that's yeah, it's always a tough conversation with sellers. You know, and it's, each month it feels like it's a little bit more challenging. <laughs> you know, uh, but in, in the right in the right situation, you know, depending on where you're at, if you have to sell, you kind of got to. If someone who has to sell, what advice would you give that person? If you're someone that has to sell, um, you know, I, I would still, you know, really, really carefully look at at your situation and, and what you're trying to do. Um, and, and I, I would make sure that the agent that's marketing your house, um, I think oftentimes, uh, sellers get caught up in the, the hype of, you know, all of these huge numbers, you know, not all of us, you know, know what it feels like to have, you know, 600,000 or 700,000 or more, you know, in the hand. So when you start talking about those, those kind of numbers, um, they seem really, really big, you know, to somebody and, you know, it makes you feel like you're sitting at the big table. So it's like, Oh, well, you're saying my house is worth 600,000. Well, how come I can't get 700,000? You know, I was on Zillow and this person told me this and that, and I need 700,000. Um, I think, I think, you know, I, I, I just had a listing appointment the other day and I, I, I told my client this, I said, you know, uh, most sellers don't understand that buyers really dictate the, the, the price. You, you as a seller can, you know, come up with whatever number I can tell you, you know, what my ego dictates that your house should sell for and 
you know, we can shake hands, hug and kiss and post it online. But at the end of the day, the house is worth what the buyer is willing to put on paper. And um, that, that I think for most sellers is a hard pill to swallow because, you know, everybody wants to feel like they have power and they have control. But, you know, if you're in a, if you got a house in a, you know, in a neighborhood, an average sales price of 200,000, and you say, well, I want a million dollars because I've, I don't put all this money into it. You know, it's a spaceship. It's got a sauna inside and all this. But it's like, no, you're all the houses around it. It's 200,000. So, you know, we can get a little bit more than that. But, you know, we're not going to get a million. And a buyer is not going to come and pay you a million in this neighborhood when they can go down the street and buy one for 200,000. <laughs> yeah, that, all the time. It's always the, the big eyes. I want to get the more, 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 more. You see? Um, <laughs> no, I, I. I love it. Um, now, because you've been doing this for 20 years, what is the most challenging transaction that you've ever been a part of? Oh, man. Let me think. That's a good one. Um, so back in 2014, I, I had a uh situation and i won't go into all the details but um you know my client really wanted this house you know it was it was going to be her first house and you know um she saw she saw this house and she said james i gotta have it you know and so um you know we go to the open house day one go inside she's like do whatever you got to do to get me this house so i'm like okay um and so i go you know let her go and i go back in and i go talk to the agent I'm like, hey, listen, my client really wants this house. I know that you, uh, I, I, I know that uh, you guys just hit the market, but we want to make sure that, you know, we don't have any competition on this. So my client has already authorized me to come $10,000 over ask. So, you know, the guy, you know, gives me the, 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 the boilerplate. Well, put it on paper, right? I'm like, okay. So I put it on paper and he counters me all these ridiculous uh, counters and, um, you know, it was at a time where, uh, agents, you know, agents like to get really, um, the, the trendy, you know, there's these trends, you know, like they like to put, you know, sold as sold as is sold as is, is not a legally binding term in a real estate contract. Um, and in 2014, the trendy term was, uh, the buyer guarantees the sales price. That is not also not a legally binding term. In, in a purchase. So this guy, you know, forced us to put this in here because he knew he was being overly greedy. And, um, you know, he knew that it wasn't probably going to appraise. Long story short, um, you know, we get into this. I wasn't a broker at this time, but we get into this big legal battle because the house uh, doesn't appraise for the purchase price. And my client wasn't going to pay under. And um, it was an FHA appraisal. And I don't know if you're aware, but, you know, FHA appraisals stick with the property. Um, and so they were going to be stuck with this low appraisal. And so they needed to close with us. And uh, long story short, after after ironing out with the lawyers, we were able to make it done. But, you know, I, I sweated a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Goodness. It's never fun to have the lawyers involved. It's never fun. No, ne ne never fun. But, you know, I'm, I'm one of those ones where, you know, I'm there for my, my client. And in that particular deal, um, you know, I, I used a strategy. I don't know if you ever, you know, read The Art of War, but, you know, uh, you know, use your 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 opponent's strengths and weaknesses against them, you know, and I and the, the agent on the other side, he had an ego like most agents do. Um, and his ego didn't get checked at the door. And so I had to do the checking for him. Um, and, and so, you know, <laughs> The lawyers got there, but you know, um, it, it was it was fun. It was nervous. You know, I had only been in the business at that time eleven years. Okay. So okay. you know, and and this guy, you know, this guy was one of those ones. I've been doing this thirty years, and you know, I'm I'm on the board and ethics and all, and I'm like, you know, he had these big names, and I'm like, I'm just James. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, <laughs> a lot of times ego can get you in trouble in this industry. Yeah. Get you in trouble. Try to be too. too 
too co- overconfident in your offer or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know. So, uh, James, I appreciate your time. Now, now just tell me, so James, how if if someone is in the area that you service, what areas do Jay Marshall? What do you service? What areas do you work in? And where is your area of expertise? And how can if people want to find you, how can they find James Marshall? Um. So right now, um, I, I'm actually transitioning everything. So uh, right now, I, I used to be a Remax agent, as you know, um, and I was with Remax uh, for a majority of my my career. Um, uh, so I, th- I think I was I've been with Remax at least 15 out of the 19 years um, uh, that 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 I've been an agent. Um, but now I've decided to kind of branch out, do my own thing. So I've started my own shop, Mr. Marshall Real Estate. Um, and, uh, we serve Northern California. Um, so, uh, primary expertise in Solano County, uh, Yolo County, uh, Sacramento County, uh, Napa County, um, and Sonoma County. So kind of all, all of, all of the, uh, uh, surrounding areas. Um, website address um, is uh, mrmarshallrealestate.com. It doesn't get more simple than that. <laughs> it doesn't get more simple than that. Website is still under construction, um, but right now you can you can sign up um, on the site, send the information, and we're getting uh, uh, you know we're we're getting uh, market material out, and you know um, you know really pounding the pavement, giving you the information that you need, um, you know, for your particular area. Okay. Oh yeah. That's so. So it's Mr. Marshall Real is the is the name of is the name of the website, and uh, and Solano County, Northern California, uh, Fairfield, Sassoon, Rio Vista, anywhere in those areas, Mr. Marshall can help you. Northern California specialist. My yes. Yes. And, and, I, and I can say James did help me buy my first property in 2007. So yeah. that was that was pre pre crash, pre market crash, but. Uh, we got a good deal on it at the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, man. That was, that was the hundred percent financing days, man. It was. was <laughs> well, I tell you what, I still own that property. I bought it in two thousand seven. I still own the property, and it's doing great. So uh, I can tell you, I appreciate it. It's a great investment. I have no complaints on that property whatsoever. So, uh, yeah. How uh, far have we come in all these years, man? That's something crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good experience. Uh, so James, is there anything you want to leave with anyway, buyers, sellers, homeowners, uh, potential investors, whatever it is, what, what kind of advice would you give every, you know, what you want to leave? Yeah. You know, I, I would say for, for, for everybody, you know, one, one of the number one questions that I get, you know, and, and it's a serious question. They look at me, is it a good time to buy? And it's like, it's a test of my, my, my character. And, you know what what they're really looking for me to say is you know you know to give them the spiel oh it's a hot market you gotta buy you know this the, you know um the the truth of the matter is it is always a good time to buy it's always a bad time to buy it depends on you your personal situation and and what your overall goals are you know um you know if you are someone out there looking for you know to buy on a trend you know um I, I will tell you this: If everybody is talking about a market crashing and and going down, um, it's probably too late. The market has already crashed. You, you're not going to get the you know you're not going to get the great deals. Um, likewise, if the market is going through the roof and you know you got everybody talking about it, you're probably catching it on on the higher end. You know, find somebody that knows the market. Find someone like me. Find someone like you. Um, you know, that pays attention to these numbers, um, you know, get a, get a couple of different people in your ear. Um, you know, it never hurts to have a second opinion, you know, get, get that second opinion, get that, that, that second set of eyes and then, and then, and then make your own mind up about, you know, what's going on in the market, um, and, and take advantage because there are some amazing, amazing deals out there, uh, that can be had even in this high interest rate, uh, climate. Um, so, you know, uh, Find 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 out if the market is great for you. You know, talk to me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, well, Mr. Marshall, I appreciate your time on this one, and uh, we thank you for joining. 
and, and, and the audience, we appreciate you guys being a part of it. And, uh, and thank you guys for joining the HJ Platinum Podcast. And until next time, you guys have a great day.